Air Traffic Control by Megan Bernhardt. Air Traffic Control, also referred to as ATC, is a way of preventing collisions and reducing the flow of air traffic. In some countries, ATC is used as a defense and security and military. They follow specific traffic separation rules, which keeps aircrafts a safe distance from one to another. To prevent wake turbulence, which is caused from other aircrafts, they follow those rules. Aircrafts that wish to travel must be cleared with the controller who owns that section of airspace before they can enter. Air traffic controllers are people who control the flow of air travel, but it is often misunderstood that they are the single operator separating air traffic. It is mainly the pilot's responsibility in separating traffic. There are three set of flight rules in which an aircraft can be flown. The first is VFR, Visual Flight Rules. They are regulations, regulations in which the pilot controls the aircraft in weather conditions that are clear enough to allow the pilot to see. If the weather is below those regulations, the pilot has to fly using electronic signals. The, rule, the second rule is SVFR, Special Visual Flight Rules. They are just specifics to the VFR regulations. They just include weather requirements and altitude measurements. The third regulation is IFR, Instrumental Flight Rules. It depends on flying by reference to instruments in the flight deck. They navigate referencing to electronic signals as well. There are many parts and specific jobs that make the Air Traffic Control System Command Center run. The Command Center operates up to 6,000 aircraft at the same time. The Command Center regulates air traffic, weather equipment, runway closures, and other factors that can be stressful to the National Airspace System, referred to as NAS. The Air Reservation Office distributes reservations to and from airports with traffic that is above the normal limits. Special events such as the Olympics or NASCAR races can affect it. The Central Altitude Reservation Function, CARF, is responsible for coordinating military and civilian altitude reservations. Personnel must be able to determine when military operations, national security operations, and other civilian emergency operations require specific coordination. The TFMS, Traffic Management Systems, evaluate and predict when traffic will increase. <clears throat> they provide routes for the pilots to land safely. The Flight Liaison Office, AVN, improve response to customers' needs and strengthen the partnership between service providers and customers. Liaison means to communicate or cooperate with facilities, so this branch is specifically designed to keep good relations between the services and customers. The International Operations and Procedures, IOP. They are in charge of designing and controlling production of goods and services. They ensure that businesses can operate using as few resources as needed to meet customers' requirements. So they just basically control everything what comes to keeping customers happy. The NOCC, referred to as NOC, National Operation Control Center, is in charge of coordinating facility restorations and keeping record of NASA equipment. They report data from field organizations to the National Airspace, Airspace Station, the NAS. They monitor, cr monitor critical situations as they evolve while coordinating with air traffic facilities. They monitor power failures, communication line alarms, and other performance issues. So they are basically like the watchtower of the station. The Notice to Airmen Office, NOTAM, are, are the most up-to-date resource for information related to NAS. The office spreads information on hazards or temporary changes in the NAS until the proper documentation has been recorded. Examples are runaway closures, malfunctions to navigational aids, missile, missile launches, and other previous or um, like previous things. Um, the severe weather area, the SVRWX, is in charge of severe weather changes. They minimize the impact of severe weather. They collect meteorological information and reroute aircrafts clear of potential hazardous weather. They have to keep in touch with other facilities so they can reroute aircraft safely. As you can see and see, ensuring safe air travel isn't as easy as it seems. There are various programs, procedures, and coordinations 
that are involved with safe traveling. Next time you decide to travel across the country, you will be able to fully understand and appreciate what it takes to travel safely.